I'm Steve from This Week With Cars, and welcome to a special year-end video. Today I'd like to visit some of the episodes that I shot and never finished. Um, I've been doing this for a little over a year now, and in that year I've released over 100 videos. I think I'm up to around 120 right now, and I have shot things that I haven't ever shown you. It's things that were going to be an episode, things that Maybe I started to shoot and decided to have fun instead. So I wanted to show you nine of those videos today. They range everywhere from a Volkswagen Beetle to a giant military truck. And since these episodes were never finished, I thought it would be fun if I watched them along with you and gave you a little bit of commentary. Today I'm in my 1985 Bluebird Wander Lodge. I don't think I've ever shown you this vehicle before. So hopefully, uh, maybe this next year or in coming videos, I'll be able to show you this vehicle. So let's get started. Let's watch the first nine of my lost videos. First thing I should do is start the car up and see what it sounds like. This is an MG Midget that I wanted to show you. I was going to get this car running really well and well i ran into a lot more problems than i had expected with it well the first problem is the ignition switch is not working it's just spinning so i'm gonna have to tighten that up okay i've got that fixed pull the choke a little bit so it does start it hardly revs up you can hear it definitely sounds like it's not running on all the cylinders. The first thing I'm going to do is loosen these two bars, one right here for the choke, this one back here for the throttle, so that I can adjust each carburetor separately. There's no way to make the adjustments on them with them connected together. What I didn't film is I had to replace the drive shaft in this car and the, when the drive shaft had jammed it had shoved itself into the transmission so hard I had to remove the engine the transmission and it was a fight to get that out of there one tip when you're installing your carburetors you should turn these the other way so that the nuts are facing towards you to make it easy to adjust later one thing I don't like on this car is the vents for the float bowls are just have these little hoses on it when the float valve gets stuck these will just pump out fuel like crazy being up here it will go all over everything it could go into the cab it could go right on the hot exhaust so it's a good idea to run these down to the ground somewhere now that i have both of these bars loosened so that when one side turns it doesn't affect the other side i want to set the tune on this car to set the tune on these carbs back to the factory position, you turn this nut on each carb up all of the way and then back down two and a half turns. If you own or work on these cars, it's a good idea to get the correct SU adjusting wrench, which allows you get in, to get into small places to adjust this. With this wrench, it's easy to make small adjustments. One thing that I like to do to keep track of where I am is take a Sharpie and color the flats on the nut that's near you and then you can help keep track of how many turns you've turned and when you're doing your fine adjustment later you can remember what you've done now that i've adjusted the carburetors to back to the initial mixture settings i'm going to start the car up and see how it runs Now that the mixture has been set, I need to adjust the idle on both carburetors to see if they're synced. To do that, you use a flow meter to see measure how much air is flowing through the, each carburetor. You want the number to be the same. Once you have the mixtures and idle set, you can test the mixture by pulling up on the piston lifting pin, which is on the side of each of the carburetors. Lift that pin up, which lifts the piston up, and by listening to how the engine changes, you can tell if you're rich or lean. When you want to test your tune, tighten the linking bar back up. Car 
sounded okay there, but it was it had a lot of problems. Almost everything was wrong and broken. Uh, previous owners had really messed that car up, and it was something that I wasn't prepared to uh, show. Uh, I wasn't real happy that that car was just going to need a lot of work, and it wasn't worth it. I think I was taking the Lotus to a British car event. Yeah, I think it was like a poker rally or something. But this is the it's first video where I just decided to quit filming. Things weren't going smooth and and I just decided to have fun instead of trying to film an episode for YouTube. I'm Steve from This Week with Cars and today I want to take a look at this 1966 Volkswagen Beetle. I was driving this car last week and it vapor locked on me. I had driven it home no problem. Then about waited a half an hour and then about an hour, a mile from my house, it uh, stopped running and I couldn't get it restarted. Uh, so I'd just like to take a look at a few things and see if we can cure the vapor lock on this car. The first thing I want to check is underneath the fuel pump. I want to make sure that that's not sticking. When the engine heats up, things in there can seize up and then the camshaft will push it up and the fuel pump will stay up and it won't be pumping any fuel. Well, let's try to get as much of this stuff out of the way as I can. That car unfortunately is totaled now, so you probably won't see that again. A lot of gas is coming out now because I'm pushing the pump down, which is pumping all the gas that's in the pump out. So you can see how the fuel pump works. The cam pushes on this, and that activates the pump. Now it seems to me that there should be a pin right there that seems to be missing that it would actually push on. And maybe that's what the problem here is. And I'm not really sure why I never finished that episode. I think I just got too busy. Sometimes I'm too busy to film the things. You'll see later on in a video that it was just way too hard to film what I was doing. Okay, today I'm going to look at three cars that I just acquired. I have an address here. I've seen pictures of the cars, but I haven't seen them in person. So let's find a storage unit and see what I got. Okay, we're here I'm in front of the storage unit. Uh, got a remote. Let's open it and see what's in it. Here's the 230SL Mercedes. MGA convertible, Jaguar XJ6. Looks like I'm gonna have to take the Mercedes first because all the other cars are blocked in, so I'll get this loaded. Let's take a look inside the Mercedes. He is in it. Interior looks a little torn up, but not too bad. Doesn't smell as bad as you would think either. Okay, I've got the Mercedes loaded. Uh, time to take it back to the shop, see what I can do. The Mercedes is loaded, I'm gonna get back to the You won't see a video on that Mercedes. I was in the middle of finishing up a 280 SL that I was doing, and I've just had too much Mercedes SL at the moment. So, so I have sold that car, and you will not see any more videos on the SL, unfortunately, but obviously I do have the MGA and the Jaguar still. Okay, I'm back down here. It's about nine o'clock at night. I'm gonna take the Jaguar this time. So, I'm gonna get it loaded.
I had a lot of people claiming that I had just taken cars and I was putting dust on them and that they really hadn't been sitting around for a long time. It's like the tires coming uh, off of the wheel there. I never really worked any of this into my videos, but it's really unfortunate how mean people on YouTube can be. Hey, this is Steve from This Week with Cars, and today I'm going to an SECA rallycross put on by the Iowa region of the SECA. I'm going to be racing my 1967 Mini Cooper S, which you see behind me. There isn't snow on the roads right now, but there is definitely snow uh, in the grass and on the fields, and so it'll probably be a very snowy course today. Today I'm in Vinton, Iowa, and I'm going to run my 1967 Austin Mini Cooper S. Right now I have a set of Yokohama 8008 uh, all around the car, but I did bring a set of studded tires that I'm going to mount to the front of the car, so uh, I better get that done. blizzard came in this day and I had nothing but problems and so I ended up not making any runs with the car but luckily later on at the next rally cross I did make it out and did do a video for you. We're going to have one car, one car on course at a time to start. We'll probably send two, two cars as we figure out the timing and safe, you know, how we can safely send them. Uh, all of your times that you score Hey, I'm Steve, and this is Cassie with This Week with Cars, and uh, this is your first time ever doing a rallycross, right? Yep. Have you ever done an autocross before? Nope. So this is your first time doing anything like this? Yeah. So why don't you uh, tell us what you've done to customize your car here? Well, as you can see, there's a pink sticker. Yeah. Um, Looks like there's more pink inside. Yeah, that's kind of what gives it personality. I've named it Marley. I thought to give the YouTube channel some more variety, I would start working Cassie into some of the videos. This is the first one that we were going to try. And again, the blizzard came in and ruined the plans for that. And we've really never gotten back around to uh, making that happen yet. So this is actually the first time that you'll be seeing her formally in any of the videos. Well, this isn't good. I heard a loud bang and my shifter kicked out from me. Got under the truck here. It looks like my transmission cracked. Just broke off there. Not sure what happened. I was getting a vibration and uh, I thought maybe I had a flat spotted tire or something. I have no idea what happened there but yeah broke right there uh, behind the bell housing there you can see the damage there it's broke almost clear off so I went up to Minnesota to get uh, the extra parts that I needed to fix the truck and this is what I found at the guy's place where I got these parts it was pretty amazing This was just way too difficult of a project to, it was pretty hard to do in person because it, everything is so heavy and big and filming it just would have been a nightmare. So unfortunately I never did do an episode on this, 
but at least you get to see some of the process here. Awesome. Look cool or not? Looks way cool. Oh. Hey, hey. Wow, it looks great. <laughs> yeah, good job. That looks sick. Your antenna. <laughs> you even decorated the antenna. This again was another video where we just decided to have fun instead of trying to film this for YouTube. Uh, I think we had 90 off-road trucks show up for this uh, event. Uh, they allowed all of us to go through together to see this. This is called the Holly Jolly Lights. And all the money went to the Make-A-Wish Foundation. Very nice. Well, I'd like to thank all of you for watching and for making this a pretty good year. Uh, if you haven't yet, please click subscribe. Most of the viewers of my videos are not subscribed to my channel. Also, I have a Facebook page where it would be easier to communicate with me on if you wanted to, as well as a website where you can send me messages through there. So thanks for watching and let's hope that 2021 is even better.